Nick Ashton Sarek, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains, North Carolina. And today we'll be doing some work on the old T100. This is what we'll be working on. Door handles on Toyotas, uh, Camrys, Corollas, obviously the T100, the Tacomas, just the regular pickup trucks. There was about a 20 year span that they used this style of door handle and they all suffered from the same thing. Eventually the plastic gets old, it gets brittle, and they break. So uh, you'll see on some Camrys, the, this whole piece will break off and all you're left is the lever. On these models, it tends to more be the piece that connects the handle to the inner mechanism that breaks off. And what happens is you get a nice cold day and you get some freezing that happens and the seal freezes to the door. So when you pull up on this to pull it out, snap, it's gone. So uh, this is going to be kind of a two-parter really. It's all one video, but first thing we're going to have to do obviously is take the door panel off to get access to the inside of this handle. And then I've got my replacement handle here. These are available on Amazon, eBay, and of course you could get a genuine one from the dealership. Normally I'm all about cheaping out, but I will say that there is actually an advantage to buying the real deal, and that is that the cheaper ones from China or Taiwan or wherever you're going to get these aftermarket ones, they don't tend to hold up as well. In fact, this one is a replacement of a replacement, and now it's going to be replaced again. The driver's side also is a replacement of a replacement. Now, granted, this thing has 300,000 miles on it, but getting a Toyota, a Toyota branded one, probably 50 or 60 bucks, buying an aftermarket one, maybe $15, just something to keep in mind. Tool-wise, not a lot to this. I've got three tools and a flashlight, and that is a Phillips head screwdriver, a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench with an extension, a ratchet, right? And then I've got this, it's like a dental pick, and I'll show you why we need that. So if your model has power windows, you won't need that step. This one here has crank up windows, and there's a little clip you need to get to, and I use that to get down in there and grab that clip. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing here. Now the very first thing I need to do in order to get this job done is get this door open. So I have to go crawl around the inside. I'll get the camera situated. We'll pull off the door panel, and we'll get started. Okay, got our door panel here. This one here, like I said, crank up window. We do have these little pieces right here and here, you can see right there. And I'm gonna use my pick like that. I'm just gonna remove those. And uh, behind this, you will see two Phillips head screwdriver screw bits. Go ahead and take my Phillips. And I'm gonna remove those right now. And try hard not to lose this stuff. Alright, there's there's two. Now we have another Phillips right here that holds this door lock assembly in place. Go ahead and remove that. And that's going to release that. Now that just slides out of the way like so. Okay. One more Phillips right down here in the door handle itself. These sometimes can get a little rusted up. Water and stuff has gotten in from the windows being down. In this case, this one's still in pretty good shape. And then lastly, this, and, and it's impossible for me to show you with it on there. I'm going to go ahead and try to remove it if I get lucky here. There it is. Losing that little spring would be a bad idea, so let me grab that before it disappears forever. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting trying to find that in the driveway. So we have our window crank, and we have this piece right here. Let me get close enough to show that to you. That right there, and that slides down into this. And I'm gonna go ahead and slide it back into place because when you go back together, it just pops on, but it sits in there like that. So you're, you're gonna take a hook and you're gonna kind of pull up on that to release that. If you just pull really hard, you're actually gonna break that, so don't do that, all right? Okay, so now that we've got all that apart, we're looking at the door and it's still on here. And what it is is you have a bunch of plastic tabs all the way around here. And so usually just one good tug will remove that. And that's all there is to it. And you can see, here's the plastic tabs I was talking about all along there. A couple of them are missing on this one, but most of them are still in place. That's all there is to it. A couple of them stayed stuck on there. That's not unusual. If you can remove those, great. If not, a lot of times with this many years and miles on it, it's just not possible. So going to move that off to the side. I'm going to get the camera a little closer in so you can see what's going on inside the door and we'll have this handle out in no time. Nice and close. Okay. So we have one bolt right here that's 10 millimeter and there's another hole right there that leads to another 10 millimeter bolt. What you can't see, and I don't think I can show it to you, 
maybe very vaguely, there's a little orange tab right there that needs to be popped loose. And that's your handle rod for the door release. And we need to get that loose. Then when we take the door panel itself off, there'll be one more piece we get out of there. But let's go ahead and get that done. Okay. Once we have both of those removed, we should be able to slide the door out or the door handle out. Now take a look here. <clears throat> there are little tabs along the top here, so you're kind of going to be pushing it out and then release it like that. There we are. It has been slid out. You can see here what breaks. If I roll up and down on this, right there there's a piece that's missing, so it doesn't actually move this lever down, which is spring-loaded. Very common failure. Now, I'm also going to be taking the other side door panel off because I want to switch the lock out. The lock assembly itself is bad on this car, so I'll be switching those around. But give me a second to do that, and we'll cut this thing back together. All right, so uh, lubricated everything up here. Here's a maybe a better view for you, but there's my replacement door handle. It's very much the same, except this one's got chrome on there. Again, I, I really just didn't care about that. But to reattach this, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to try to make this something you can see here. But the lock has to go in first. We have our mechanical lever actuator right here. You can go ahead and snap that in. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing here. Going to snap that in there like so, and then if I can hold it, that right there snaps back into place, and then we'll kind of roll that back in. And there it is back in place. Oh, and I apologize how hard this is to see, but here's our door lock. We're going to slide that back into place like so. I'm gonna start this lower piece just by hand. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> this one that goes through that hole right there, I'll go ahead and start it as well. A little tricky, obviously pretty much impossible for y'all to see it. Uh, you know what, I'm actually gonna start that one first. And I'll go down and tighten these with the ratchet here in a second. So I'm going to be tightening it through that hole there, but first I want to get started by hand so I don't accidentally cross thread it. Okay, and once you've got all three started, you can go ahead and take your 10 millimeter socket and go ahead and tighten everything down. This does not have to be super tight either. This is just, just tight enough. Okay, and I'll go ahead and reinstall the door panel. Okay, once you've got the door handle on, before you put the door panel back on, it's a good idea to make sure that it works. Lock it from the inside. Make sure it unlocks and so on and so forth. Once you're confident that that's okay, and I would squirt a little bit of, oh, graphite, dry graphite, or at the very least silicone uh, in there and lubricate that and make sure everything's working. Now you're ready to reassemble your actual door panel. All right, once you've got uh, whatever's left of that plastic back on there, get that on there nicely. It's time to reinstall this. Again, we just got our clips here, so you're gonna lay this thing down on the top here. There's some little metal tabs. You have to try to get those in there. Two of them in there. 
There we go. And then give it a good whack. That's gonna hold the rest of it in place while we reattach everything. That piece right there, as you recall, you put your little pin back into it. This one's in there. And then when you slide that on, that's it, it's locked in place. We'll go ahead and reinstall this piece here. part right here. And our two screws and two caps here and here. So that's it. I'm going to be honest with you here. This job pays uh, between eight tenths and 1.2 hours at the dealership or at any local shop, plus the parts. So let's say you got the parts for $20 on eBay. If you were to buy a genuine part or pay for it at list price at a shop, you're looking at about $80 for that. Let's say another 80 in labor. So $160 to do this job for 15 to $20. And, uh, I'm going to say a half hour to 45 minutes of your life, you can knock this out. This took a lot longer than it would normally have taken me because I was trying to get this camera, you know, in the holes and in the angles. And I don't know. There are some jobs that without a boroscope, really, it's hard to show. And anything that takes place on the inside of a door is one of those jobs. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. And if you did, perhaps you will think about liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Freedom is mighty sweet.